Hey everyone, my name is Ryan and in today's video I'm going to show you how to create a Twitter bot with Node.js and the V2 Twitter API. Um, so as always I've created blog posts for the tutorial, so there's actually two that we're going to go through today. Uh, the first one is generate your keys and tokens for the Twitter API and the next one is actually creating the uh, Twitter bot with Node.js and the Twitter API. Um, both of those links will be in the description below, um, but yeah that'll have all the code and stuff that we're going to go through. Um, this is going to be a three video series with possibly more after, but there's definitely going to be three. Uh, the first one, we're just going to be creating our Twitter bot, uh, sending out a very simple tweet and talking about cron jobs and hosting our Twitter bot. The second one is going to be about images. So, uh, tweeting images. And the third one's going to be about retweeting and liking tweets. Um, cool. So just before we get into it, I just want to show you an example of a Twitter bot. So I have a game called Where Taken. It's very similar to Wordle and Wordle. Uh, it's one of those daily games and you guess the country based on uh, a photo. So this one here is Kazakhstan, but this game has a Twitter account. So, you know, if you want to see the previous day's photos, you go to the Twitter account. So I'll jump over there. And this is actually a Twitter bot. So it tweets out the number of players uh, common first guesses, all the stats and the image every single, at the same time every single day. Uh, so this one was Jordan, the previous one was Tonga, uh, then it was Sweden. And this is completely automated and it's very handy because I don't have to think about it, it just does it. Uh, so that's one example of a Twitter bot, but let's get into making a Twitter bot ourselves. All right, so the first thing we need to do is generate our keys and tokens for the Twitter API. Um, so we're just going to follow through this blog post here. So step one is to head over to the Twitter developer platform. Um, and you obviously need a Twitter account. Uh, so if you don't have one of them, uh, go and create one. Uh, and then we're going to go yeah to the d Twitter developer platform. So there's an image here. So we click on the developer platform. If it's the first time you've been there, it's going to ask you uh, a couple of questions. Um, if you don't have a valid email or phone number on your account, it's going to make sure you put that on before you sign up. And it might ask you why you're using the Twitter API. So you can just say that you're exploring the API, but eventually you'll get to a screen that looks like this one here. So welcome to the uh, Twitter developer platform. And you just give your app a name. And when you hit get keys, it will actually give you an API key, API key secret, and a bearer token. Uh, but we can regenerate them later if we do want to, but it'll come up there so you can save those ones there. Um, so let me just do that. Uh, so I'm here. So when I click developer platform, it's going to take me straight to the developer platform uh, just because I've already done this before. But yeah, so now we're up to date. Um, so step two is to set up our user authentication settings. So by default, we've only got read access, but we want read and write access. So um, basically what we do is we click the little cog icon here and we're going to come down to uh, user authentication settings here. So yours is going to say set up, but mine's going to say edit or something like that because I've already generated mine. Uh, so we'll jump over here. We click the little, little cog icon. Yep, and mine says edit. But yeah, yours will say setup. So we'll click on that one. And there's a couple of important things here. So under app permissions, we're going to go read and write. And for the type of app, we're going to say web app, automated app, or bot. And this isn't actually necessary, but it's required. So the cool bot URI, you can just put, well, this is essentially localhost. So uh, 192. 168.1.101 and I've got port 3000 so that doesn't really matter and a website URL so I've put on put in ryancarmody.dev and then we come down here and uh, save it so I can't save it because I haven't changed anything so I'll just go back uh, but you'll click save uh, so once you've done that you can come back we well, can actually click keys and tokens here or if you're back on this main screen here we can click keys and tokens and this is in our uh, blog post here. Uh, so we're on the keys and tokens tab and we want to um, basically come down here and we've got access token and secret. So mine says regenerate, but yours might say, I don't actually know what it says. Um, yeah, I've only got regenerate here. If you generated these ones before you did the user authentication settings, it'll say read only, but we want read and write. Uh, but click whatever button is there. And I'll just click regenerate. 
and it'll pop up with your access token and your access token secret. So save those ones because you won't be able to get those. Uh, it won't show you those ones again. And if you've done everything correctly, it'll say here, created with read and write permission. So we definitely need that because we want to be writing. Um, cool. So at the end, you should have an API key, an API key secret, a bearer token, an access token, and an accent access token secret. Uh, you also see here that there's a client ID and a client secret. So I think those ones are down here. You don't need to worry about those ones. You just need those five that I mentioned, uh, these ones here. Uh, cool, so let's move on to the next step. So time to create our Node.js application. So jump over to um, this blog post here because this will have all the code in it. Um, but let's go through this step by step. So the first step is to install Node. Now I'm assuming that you probably already got this installed, but uh, I've got a link to uh, Node.js here. Uh, the version that I'm using well, at the moment is 16.14.2. So if you want the exact version that I'm using, uh, there's that one. Uh, but yeah, let's jump on to step two. So we're gonna have to create a node uh, application. So I'll copy this one here. I'll actually just make a folder. So I'll call this Twitter bot YouTube and I'll go into this one and I'll run npm init dash y so that'll create our um, package.json file I can just open this one here cool and now what we'll do, we might as well just install all the, um, the dependencies uh, while we're right at the start. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna need is the Twitter API v2 package. So we'll install that one. And then we're gonna need .env because we're gonna use environment variables. Cool. Uh, we're, gonna use, we're gonna set up some cron jobs later. So we'll need this one as well. Cool. And the last thing we'll need is express. So uh, this one's in step seven, but that'll make more sense later on in the video. So we'll let those ones install. Cool, so let's jump back to step three. So uh, yeah, and we're gonna create a .env file, and this is where we're gonna put all our you know API keys, API secrets, access tokens, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so let's do that. So I'll copy this one here, and I'll create a new file called .env env and I'll paste this one in here and uh, yeah what I'm going to need to do is go I've actually exited this so let me go back into this one here and I just need to go get my keys so give me one second cool so I'll have to um, regenerate these ones so this is my API key so I'll put this one here and my secret. Cool, so I've got those ones saved. Uh, I'll regenerate the bearer token. Um, and we're actually not gonna use the bearer token in this uh, video here, but it's gonna be uh, later on when we're, we wanna search for tweets and stuff like that, but that'll come later on. Uh, and the last one is the access token and the access secret. So I've saved that one. So I'm just gonna regenerate this one and I'll get the access token and the secret. Cool. Uh, and the last thing we wanna do is add our app ID. So the app ID is actually the first section here of the access token. So I might just jump back to the blog post. So it's a bit clearer here. So this is a an access token and just that first bit is your app ID. Again, we're not gonna need this one in this video here, but when we wanna like like or retweet um, tweets, we're gonna need that app ID. So we might as well add it in now. So let's grab this one here and we'll put that one there and we'll save that one. All right, so we'll jump back to uh, the blog and we'll go on to step four. So we need to create our Twitter client so basically we're gonna be using the Twitter API v2 package to create our 
um, our Twitter client, and then we can use that to uh, post to Twitter. So I'm just gonna copy all of this code here, and I'm gonna create a file called twitterclient.js. So I'll do that here. twitterclient.js, and we'll paste that one in there. Uh, so what, what's this actually doing here? Well, it's actually creating two clients. I just called it the client and the bearer, uh, but we, we basically use this bearer one to search for tweets. So uh, if we wanted to retweet a tweet, but we first wanted to search for it, we would search it using the bearer, and then we would use the, uh, the client to retweet it. Uh, in this video here, we're just gonna be using this one, but as I said, in future videos, we'll be using uh, this one here. So this creates, yeah, the client and the bearer, and as you can see, uh, all those keys that we needed. So API key, API secret, access, access token, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, So save that one, and we can jump onto step five. So now we can create our index.js file. So I'll copy this over, I'll create the index.js file, and then I'll go through it. So let's go new file index.js and I'll paste this one in here. So obviously this first one here is just so we can use the environment variables. I guess the environment variables are optional. Uh, you don't have to use them, but it's good practice too. And then obviously when we host this on a server, uh, we can um, enter those ones in. Uh, I'm bringing in the Twitter client that we created in the Twitter client.js and I'm creating this asynchronous function here and I've got a try catch block and it's essentially just calling Twitter client dot v2 because we're using the v2 API uh, dot tweet so it's it's pretty easy and the and then we just enter the message that we want to put in so the text uh, and we've got hello world here um, cool so uh, that is essentially it so this uh, is probably going to work here uh, so if I go uh, node index dot JS and I run that. Uh, so there no errors have come up. So if I jump over to Twitter and I go to my profile, uh, well, this one was from yesterday, but you can see nine seconds ago, um, it has uh, tweeted hello world. And that was from our, uh, the code that we um, wrote. So that is the basic tweet functionality set up, but um, what you're probably gonna wanna do, and especially if it's a Twitter bot, um, we want to add some sort of automation to this so we can put it up on a server and then it will automatically tweet out things um, without us needing to do anything. So the way, the way to do this is with cron jobs. So let's jump back to uh, the blog post here. And yeah, we need to create a cron job. So if you're not too sure what a cron job is, is it's essentially a job or a uh, piece of code that will execute um, every so often that you tell it to. Uh, hopefully I explain that, explain that all right. Um, so I'm not going to be going through too much about what a cron job is, but I'll give a little bit of an explanation. Um, so first thing we need to do is just um, require this one in our code. So we'll come up here and we'll put this one in here. And then we will grab this code here and we'll replace tweet with this one. Uh, so what is happening here? So it's creating a new cron job. So if I had star, 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 this code would run every single second. If I had star um, slash, or oh, I won't even do that one, I'll just do 30 here. This is going to run on the 32nd of each minute. So it's gonna run every minute, but on the 32nd um, bit, hopefully that sort of makes sense. Um, but there's actually some pretty good tools online to just kind of get your head around this. So I've got a link here, which explains a lot more about uh, cron job. So you can have a look at that. Uh, but there's also this link here where you can play around with cron jobs here. So this one here, it doesn't actually have the seconds, which is annoying, but you get the idea. Um, this cron job will run at 4.05 every single day. Why? Because in the hours section, you've got four, and you've got five. If you wanted to run it at 4.30, you'd run it at 4.30. Um, if we put a star here, um, this would run it at minute 30 of every single hour. So this would run um, 24 times and at minute 30, it would run. Uh, if I did star divided by two, uh, this would run every second minute. 
this one would run every 30th minute. So this would run every 30 minutes. Um, so this is one, this one is good to sort of have a bit of a play around. You know, you this one goes, you know, all the way up to days and stuff like that. Um, but a, a pretty common one would be, you know, this one might be 30 and this one might be five. Um, so, you know, this is just a daily task that will run at 5.30 a.m. every single day. Um, but cool. So no more about cron jobs, but, you know, have a look into, into that. Um, so if I now, maybe what I'll do, I'll jump back to Twitter and I'll delete this one here and I'll delete this one here. And what have we got it set up? So now we've got it set up, um, running at the 30 second mark of every minute. So let's save that and run this one and you can see that you know it hasn't stopped it's sort of got this cron job running so if we jump back to the uh or to twitter and i'll refresh this one here oh so we actually got lucky so this one ran um just then but in one more minute it will run again so it's not actually going to post it again because it's duplicate content but um yeah, it'll run every, uh, at the 30 second mark. So that is cron job. So yeah, you can have a look a little bit more, a uh, little bit more of a look into that one. Uh, but let's move on to the final step, um, which is adding express. So, uh, I ran into this issue when I tried to host my Twitter bot on Heroku. Uh, it freaked out because it couldn't attach to a, um, uh, yeah, it needs to attach to uh, a port. So that's really simple. We can just, um, you know, create a, um, like a little express app. So all we really need to do is just copy this in and we'll put that one there. So yeah, um, you know, requiring express, creating uh, an express app, you know, the port and then listening on that port. And that is fine. So you're not going to need that when you're running it locally, but if you do want to host it on a Heroku or something like that, uh, you'll need that one. Um, cool. So the final code is here. And yeah, I guess the last thing to do is go host it on your uh, favorite uh, hosting platform. Um, so that's the end of the video for um, just setting up the basic Twitter bot. But in the next video, I'm going to show you how to uh, post photos. And then in the following video, I'm going to do likes and retweets.